the Upanishads in two parts. Part one, translated by F. Max Muller, Aetreya Aranyaka, third Aranyaka, second Adhyaya, fifth Anda. Now next to the Upanishad of the whole speech. True, all these are Upanishads of the whole speech, but this they call so chiefly. The mute consonants represent the earth, the syllabants the sky, the vowels heaven. The mute consonants represent Agne, fire. The syllabants air, the vowels the sun. The mute consonants represent the Rigveda, the syllabants, the Yagurveda, the vowels, the Samaveda. The mute consonants represent the eye, the syllabants, the ear, the vowels, the mind. The mute consonants represent the up breathing, the syllabants, the down breathing, the vowels, the back breathing. Next comes this divine lute, the human body, made by the entities. The lute made by man is an imitation of it. As there is a head of this, so there is a head of that. Lute made by man. As there is a stomach of this, so there is a cavity in the part of that. As there is a tongue of this, so there is a tongue in that. As there are fingers of this, so there are strings of that. As there are vowels of this, so there are tones of that. As there are consonants of this, so there are touches of that. As this is endowed with sound and firmly strung, so that is endowed with sound and firmly strung. As this is covered with a hairy skin, so that is covered with a hairy skin. Merely in former times they covered a lute with a hairy skin. He who knows this lute is made by the devas and meditates on it. He is willingly listened to. His glory fills the earth. And wherever they speak Aryan languages, there they know him. Next follows the verse called Agrasa, the essence of speech, when a man reciting or speaking in an assembly does not please, let him say this verse. May the queen of all speech, who is covered as it were by the lips, surrounded by teeth, as if by spears, who is a thunderbolt, help me to speak well. This, the Agrasa, the essence of speech. And the Aryan languages, of course, we're talking about those five tribes, four of them, what we would call Hindu and one Persian, Iranian, you know, whichever term you like better, or maybe some other term that I'm not thinking of, but, um, the strings of that order being inverted in the text of what we've seen, Vadanam, what makes the instrument speak, Pastena, reference to the tongue and the cavity, the Kashmir manuscript reads Udara, Evam, and so on. And the, after the inserting of the preceding chapter on Amina and the concluding paragraph on the highest knowledge, he returns to the meditation on the letters. And one of the things that we come across is this, the city of nine gates bit. And, well, we have eyes. We have nostrils. We have ears, we have a mouth, genitals, and anus. And while we zoom up, we see a lot more holes, like all over the place, right? But, um, so we're referred to, like, um, some sort of musical instrument, like the flute or, or something like this. But the lute's the string thing, so, you know, we have all these... fleshy bits going in between everything. So that's another way to understand things, but don't try to literally pluck people and just breathe in that hard. You know, 